As you can see from the version number, if you've been with Clover for a while, we've been running with a version 5.x for quite a while, for a couple of years actually. And this is quite a large jump for us. So there are, of course, a lot of exciting new features. What's important to say is that we are uh, building on top of what we've had before. So we are not throwing away uh, the Clover that you know, but rather we are adding new functionality on top of it. So if you want to upgrade to Clover DX6, everything that you've built in Clover DX5 will continue working. You will just have additional functionality that focuses on business users and their kind of self-service needs uh, available on top of what you've had there before. As usually, we are keeping our release cadence, so one release every three months. So you can expect Clover DX 6.1 uh, release at the end of June and then 6.2 and so on in September and December. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what's new and how Clover DX 6 as a platform differs from Clover DX 5. When you look into what we had in the platform for many years now, is that we basically focused on three pillars, uh, which we try to help our customers with. One is that we always try to automate all your data workloads, whether it's simple or complex, you are always able to automate, uh, for example, file ingestion or your processes and so on. Uh, at the same time, we try to make sure that Clover can be used for anything you need to do with your data. So it's just one place, one platform that you use for doing everything you need to do with your data. So your teams do not have to learn new tools or, or use complicated technology stacks to implement their data processes. And as a result of the automation and simplified landscape of the technologies, the productivity of the teams should be increased. So you should be able to deliver your new data products faster. And since everything is automated or can be automated, the trust in the data that you have in your organization should be higher uh, and it should be much easier for data consumers to work with their data once they are put through Clover DX as a platform. And all of this was delivered in a package that was easy to deploy, uh, didn't require too much resources, and you were able to deploy it in cloud, on-premise, or even hybrid solutions where you mix and match the, the, the environments as, they, as you need. With Clover DX6, what we are doing is we are adding a new part of the platform. So building on the foundation that we've created in Clover DX5, we are adding what we call uh, data, data self-service for everyone. With this, we are aiming at business users and less technical users. So basically helping everyone across the organization take advantage of the platform. Traditionally, Clover DX5 was mostly focusing on technical users. So the interfaces we've had there we're focusing on users who can code or who uh, are at home in complicated interfaces. With Clover DX6, we are changing that and we are expanding uh, to wider audience across your whole organization so that people who traditionally do not use data integration products can work with Clover very easily. And we are keeping everything else the same. So the deployment model is the same. You can deploy anywhere you want. And as I mentioned before, everything you've had built in Clover DX5 stays and will continue working in Clover DX6. If you look at that in a bit more detail, traditionally we've had the interfaces that you see uh, in green. Basically, we supported you from the very beginning of your data product development. So you started with designer uh, to create your jobs. You were able to test them and so on. You deployed in server console. Uh, where you could automate your workloads, operate them at scale, you know, for example, in cloud. And of course, you were able to publish data in many different ways. Uh, for example, just writing into files, databases, APIs. But you were also able to use data apps that were kind of on the uh, boundary between, between the IT team and the business users, because the IT team needed to build data apps, but usually those apps were consumed by business users who were able to run their workloads ad hoc. What we are adding in Clover DX6 are two completely new interfaces that allow you to work with the product differently. The first interface is called Data Catalog that allows you to explore the data that you have available within platform. I'll show you what it looks like during the demo, but it's something very simple that allows you to see the live data that you have available within the platform and directly use that. And the second new interface is the Wrangler. This is the self-service part of Clover DX where you can work with your data. Uh, so you no longer have to code or implement anything and ask IT to implement. But if you're on the business side, you can just use the Wrangler to 
create what you need and run your jobs by yourself. If you look into those interfaces in a bit more detail, uh, our goal was to basically improve the collaboration between IT and the business side of the organization, because every time you create a data product, these two parts of the organization need to work together. Usually the business side are the people who need something done with the data and the IT knows how to do it. And th there's often a lot of friction between uh, these two parts of the organization where you need to create complicated requests, someone needs to develop them in whatever platform they have, and then you know you test and see whether that works. We tried to shorten that loop significantly by allowing less technical users uh, to work with the platform directly without them having to ask the IT to implement anything. So we've added those two self-service interfaces that allow uh, the business users to access high quality created data. The data is still managed by the IT, uh, so the IT can make sure that only data that's uh, clean, that makes sense, is published. So it's not just you know giving you access to every database that you have within the organization, but it, you can control who gets to see what. <clears throat> you can then use the Wrangler to transform your data. You can, for example, clean your data, change the format, calculate something, and so on. Uh, and one of the cornerstones of Clover was always helping people automate boring or mundane tasks. And this is what we've seen with business users as well. They frequently work with Excel files and need to do the same thing over and over, for example, with fresh data every week, creating a report, where you download an export of data somewhere, you massage the Excel file a little bit, and you have the result. With Wrangler, you can essentially record your steps, replay them anytime on your new data, so you don't have to redo the steps again, which saves you a lot of time, uh, and of course reduces the risk of you making an error while you are essentially copy-pasting from your previous instance of the same sheet. And at the same time, we wanted to make sure that the IT doesn't feel they are losing control. So everything still runs on the same platform. The IT has control over who gets to see what kind of data and what they can do with the data. You know, the users and permissions, everything like that is managed in the interface you already know from CloreDX5. And since the business users will be able to implement a lot of their requirements by themselves, this should result in, a, uh, in fewer ad hoc requirements requests for implementations of various reports or data exports from business users, because all of that will be done by those users by themselves. Uh, looking at the interfaces that we add, the, the first one is the data catalog. This is the first interface that you'll probably want to explore. This is essentially a link between data that is exposed to business users from IT side of the organization, and you can see what's uh, in the data sets, you can search through that. And the goal is for the IT to be able to share high quality data uh, so that the users do not need to be confused about using older versions of something like happens frequently where you have an export of data from somewhere and can be very old. The goal is to share live data. So this is not just a database of uh, data set names, but rather it connects you to live data that lives within whatever the source system is. So once you click on a button, you see what the data looks like and don't have to try to figure out how to download or how to access it by yourself. And of course, the goal is to eliminate silos so that you can work with your data, whatever it lies or whoever is the actual owner of the data. As long as you have access to that, you'll be able to use it. And this should improve the collaboration because IT can always control uh, what the users can see, and those users will be able to work with IT to, for example, publish additional data sets if they are missing something or improve the data sets uh, that they have. Uh, the second interface that you'll see is the Wrangler. Uh, this is the self-service data transformation tool or interface that allows those business users to implement their transformations without having to learn how to code. It's all access to web browser, so you don't have to install anything. You simply connect to your Wrangler instance and start working with your data right away. Uh, you can explore your data sets that you have there. You can see the screenshot there, but I'll show you what it looks like live on the demo in a couple of minutes. Uh, and since this is a self-service interface, you can do whatever you want with your data. You can create outputs as you need to. You can add steps to transform your data in many different ways. Uh, and the main 
difference between the way that you worked with Data and Clover before is that the Wrangler doesn't require you to learn coding at all. The only thing you'll, where you'll write something looking like a code are formulas where you basically want to calculate something, but that's, you know, everyone can do that. If you've seen Excel before, this is something that you'll be able to use very easily. If we look at this a little bit more detailed, the architecture of CloverDX is very similar uh, to architecture of CloverDX5. As I mentioned, we added two new interfaces. So when you when you look at uh, how it works, we still have CloverDX server powering all of this, which runs the server console and data apps as, as it was done before. But there are now new interfaces called Wrangler and Data Catalog that you can connect through to separate URL. They have their own login page. So those users wanting to use just Wrangler or Data Catalog do not have to learn or understand how the server console works. They don't have to learn anything about CloverDX designer or data types or anything like that. They can simply go to Wrangler and data catalog and log in there and start working with their uh, with their data right away. Uh, of course, as we were doing this and implementing those new interfaces, we've made a lot of other changes in the platform that will be useful outside of Wrangler and data catalog too. So we still want to support and work with users who have very complicated requirements who traditionally use the designer and server to implement their uh, their data processes. So we've improved the libraries quite a bit. Uh, one of the improvements that we've made is the ability to install multiple instances of a library. If you haven't used them before, libraries are essentially packages that you can install into your server and they'll, they help you share code uh, between multiple environments, multiple users and so on. Uh, you can see a screenshot from a library uh, <clears throat> library screen uh, in a server where I have a number of libraries installed and each library can publish various uh, objects like subgraphs, job flows, graphs, metadata and so on. And from CloverDX6, you can install multiple instances of a library each with different settings, which is advantageous if you want to uh, give access to different kinds of data to different users, for example. You can have different permissions for different libraries and so on. Uh, you can also enable or disable library. This is very useful if you want to stop doing something or stop allowing your users from, from seeing some kind of data so you don't have to go and delete anything and simple, simply disable that. And again, I'll show you what it looks like on the demo. Uh, one big change for libraries is the ability to include what we call data source connectors. These are new types of entities within libraries that allow you to publish data via data catalog and Wrangler. So this is how you can add completely new data sets so that your users can consume them from data catalog and Wrangler. Uh, the data source connectors themselves are subgraphs, so you don't have to learn any new technology. They work just like any other subgraph that you've learned about before. They just have some specialties like they need additional metadata so that Wrangler and data catalog understand what's inside them. Uh, as is traditional with Clover, you can create connectors of any complexity. You can have any number of connectors within a sim single library. Uh, so you can very easily publish any kind of data you have. And the screenshot or the picture on the right side of the slide kind of shows the principle where you have two subgraphs in this case. We have one implementing the customer data access. Uh, this one goes and talks to an API. You can see the loop over here that's published as a customer's data set within the data catalog. And similarly, invoices get published as invoices. You can, of course, configure the labels and so on. So they are nice and easy to understand uh, to all users. And since we've added data sources and wanted to make sure that the permission system for Wrangler is more granular than what's available for sandboxes, for example, we've added a completely new screen to library configuration that allows you to configure who, uh, who gets to use <clears throat> your data sources and how they can use them. Uh, this is what it looks like. And for each connector within a library, you get two sets of permissions that allow you to control who can see the data in data catalog. That's the first column. You can see that I have it configured so that everyone can see what's in the data, but only some people within those groups defined as regular CloverDX groups uh, can work with the data. So if you want to see what's inside, everyone can do that. But <clears throat> If you want to transform the data in some way or, or download the data from those data sources, only people who are members of the groups listed in here will be able to do that. This is available for uh, for every library instance. So for example, if you install three copies of a library with different settings, 
you will be able to configure different access permissions for each connector within all those three libraries. We also added a group called everyone. This is a new thing as well that allows you to simplify the setup so that you don't have to list every user separately or list every group. You simply can say that everyone can do uh, something with your with your connector to make the setup uh, fast and quick. And as usually, all of this is exported with the configuration of the server. So you, if you, for example, configure this on a test server or on Q&A and want to migrate to production, you can export settings just like you are used to uh, through import and export uh, pages in the, in the server and import them on the other side and everything will be copied for you. Uh, as part of Clover DX6, we have also simplified the technology stack for Clover DX. Uh, so we no longer support old version of Oracle Java. So Java 8 uh, from Oracle is no longer supported for server deployments and Open Liberty as an application server is not supported either. Um, so if you look at the, the support matrix for Clover DX server, we basically have three technology stacks right now. The first one is Apache Tomcat with Eclipse Tamarin. This is completely open source and free, so we don't have to pay anyone to run this. And then we have two commercially supported stacks, either by VMware, VMware or Red Hat, who provide support for the TC server and then uh, their own Open JDK and Red Hat does the same for the for their JBoss web server and Red Hat Open JDK. Uh, so depending on your requirements for uh, SLAs and so on, you can pick the stack that suits you best. So that was the theory. Let's now have a look at demo, uh, and I'll show you the demo in two parts. Uh, when you look at the whole process, basically end to end, from publishing the data source, which the IT does, right? Those are the green boxes; they belong to IT. And the blue boxes belong to the business users who want to do something with data. So I'll show you the business side of it first so that you can see what data catalog and Wrangler look like. And after that, we'll look what the IT does uh, to publish data in a, in a catalog, how they can see what users are doing with that control permissions and so on. So let me switch to, uh, sorry, to, uh, to my Clover. And I'll start with the Wrangler. As I mentioned, there's a separate login screen uh, for Wrangler. So I'll log in as usually. And this is something that you can give your users access to and they don't have to have any access to the server console. So they will only ever see, uh, sorry, their simple user interface uh, without having to worry about that. And the first thing that you'll notice about Wrangler is that it's really simple. There's no complicated pages or anything. It essentially has two screens. The first one that we'll look at uh, is the data catalog that allows you to explore uh, the data that the IT team has made available to you. You can see that I have a number of what we call data connectors or data source connectors published in here from different libraries. I have six or sorry, five connectors that talk to HubSpot, which is a CRM system. I have uh, some connectors that represent an online store. I have those two times for different regions or actually three times. And at the end, I have zero, which is an accounting system, uh, two instances of that. So you can have any number of data sets in here. For each of them, you'll be able to look at uh, at what's inside your data. Uh, so you can click on that. You'll see the preview of your data. When the preview is loaded, it actually goes and talks to the live system. So this is not data downloaded somewhere in a database, but rather it goes and talks to an API database or whatever is the source of the data published by the connector. So you can quickly see uh, what's there, what the data looks like, but you can also look at more technical details. If you want to, for example, figure out whether a certain column is available, you can see what kind of columns are there, their names, if and descriptions are provided, you can see that that's here as well. Of course, you have many data sources published. What you want is the ability to search through them. So that's exactly what the catalog allows you to do. Uh, if you type in, something, it will find uh, what you are looking for in column names, data sources, in descriptions, and so on. So for example, typing something that you can expect in business data like amount gives me quite a number of results. And what's best is that once you figure out which data set you want to use, you can very quickly use it. So from this point where I'm just kind of browsing the data that I have available to doing something with the data, it's just a click of a button. I click the blue button and using a new job. I can call it something. Uh, let's call it webinar. 
And now uh, it will ask me for parameters, which I don't need at, in this case. And this is where I'm switching to Wrangler to actually do something with my data. At this point, it's again talking to a data source, downloading a sample from it, showing me uh, the sample of the data that will show me first thousand rows. I can look at what's available, you know, uh, see what columns I have, but I can also change them in some way. So if I want to implement some simple transformation, let's, for example, do something that, that makes it easy to see the result. Uh, so let's do, uh, let's do, for example, uppercase, that's easy to see. And as I'm working with my data in Wrangler, the changes are immediately applied to the data and recorded in here uh, so I can see them in the steps on the right side. For example, if I don't need the ID, uh, I can drop the column. Uh, I have all actions available on the toolbar as well. So it really depends on what I want to do. Well, let's do this one in uppercase as well. Uh, and this way I can implement pretty much anything I want. There are more complicated steps too, where I can, for example, do a formula. Uh, so what, what do we do? Last name. Oh, sorry, I missed the key. First name. And this way, this is the only code that you'll really need in Wrangler, essentially writing formulas if you want to compute something. Uh, and then let's create a column full name. You can see that I actually used a space in a column name, which is another thing where uh, we wanted to make sure that Wrangler doesn't kind of make it harder for less technical users to understand it. So when we can, we allow you to write pretty much anything anywhere so, uh, so that you get your new column. And it will be over here, right? So this is my full name. Of course, I can move it around if I want to. Uh, uh, there are many steps that we have available. Oh, let's put it as the first one. Um, and you can work and implement any kind of transformation that, that you'll need. Then I should have my column in here. After which point I can, for example, delete, uh, delete this column and, well, delete everything from here. And let's delete this one too. So this way I can I can work with my data. And if I want to see what was happening previous step, I can easily do that. I can click anywhere in my transformation and kind of go back there. So this way the steps are recorded. And if I want to run it on full data set, regardless of the size, you can easily process millions of records this way if you want. I just click on the run job and it will run job on my CloverDX server uh, and allow me to download the results. I have uh, left the settings at default, so it will produce a CSV file, which I can download and, and show you what it looks like. I can, right, so this is my output. You can see my full name over here and the rest of the fields, uh, fields I did not touch at all. Uh, I can see the statistics that it read 10,000 contacts and I didn't filter or do anything with the data that would remove uh, any data from there. So I get 10,000 records on output. You can of course do a bit more complicated transformations that, that the simple one that I created. For example, this one uses uh, lookups to convert from currencies that it reads from different currencies into US dollars. So that if you have invoices in different currencies, you can easily see the actual amount in dollars, for example. And then it figures out whether the invoice was paid too late or not and adds a fee to it based on that. So all of that can be done in Wrangler with, well, you can see that there are 14 steps in here. Just as before, I can run the job. And if I want to run it again, I simply can click the run button even from here and it will go and contact the data source, grab the latest, freshest version of the data and run it again. So this is, well, of course I broke it somewhere. Uh, this is where, uh, this is what allows you to basically repeat your jobs anytime. If your data refreshes, you don't have to redo it, redo the steps again. You simply uh, click on the button and it will run again. So that was the business side of it. And of course, as I mentioned, the IT retains control of everything so they can see what you have. So let's talk a little bit about how you can publish data in, in a data catalog for users to use. This process is a little bit more involved, but it is still uh, fairly simple and it fits within the whole framework of how CloverDX works and how libraries work. So the first thing that you need to do is, you, of course, figure out some way for data to be published. 
uh, and then you can implement your data logic as a subgraph. If your data exists in a CSV file, for example, users can just drop it into Wrangler and it will work. But if it's something more complicated, like an API or something similar, you can implement a library uh, that contains connectors that provide access to the data. So you essentially build a set of subgraphs the same way like you've been doing for years, right? So nothing has changed there. The only change is that you need to package subgraphs into a library. There's a wizard. Uh, to do that, I'll show you what it looks like in a designer. There's basically a set of screens that you click through. You get a library out of that, which is a file that you install to a server. Optionally, you can configure permissions, and that's it. After that point, uh, your data is published in a data catalog, and Wrangler and data catalog users can work with it directly. So let's have a look at that. I have an example library in here. The library starts its life as a regular project, so you don't have to do anything special. You just uh, create your new CloverDX project, just like you are used to, and then implement your data sources. You can see that I have a number of them in here uh, that simulate the online store. Uh, this one provides access to contacts, for example. This is what it looks like. And you can see that this is actually generating random data so that it's easy to share. Uh, this generates personal details, addresses, combines them and produces the output with some lookups and so on. So Whatever you want to do in, in your connectors, you can. They can be simple as this one or complicated if you have complex API to work with. Similarly, if I look, for example, at orders and line items, well, this one is actually even simpler. It just grabs an output from somewhere and pipes it to the output. So assuming that I've created all my connectors, just like I do uh, regular subgraphs, I can easily export. This is a library. As I mentioned, there's a new wizard that does that and it will guide you through the process. First, you have to select what is the public interface of the library, configure which of those subgraphs are data source connectors. Not every subgraph has to be a connector. You can have others that are only useful in designer, but you can easily have subgraphs that, that, are, uh, that are both. So you can use them from designer as well as from Wrangler. You can provide additional metadata, like for example, if there's initialization job, description and so on. And after you click finish, it will create a file for you. And that's it. You have now created a library that you can import uh, into. Sorry, I need to go in here uh, that you need to import into your server console. That hasn't changed. So you have the same screen you used for uh, for logging in, you go into libraries. And there are multiple ways of installing a library. There's a button for that in here. You can either install library from a repository, which is the recommended way, or you can browse local files. And the file that you got from a designer, you can install it from here. I'll actually go to the repository because that's more interesting way of doing that. And repository is essentially a way for you to share libraries uh, in a single location. So what you can do is create, for example, organization-wide repository where you save your libraries that you created and everyone who has access to that can see those libraries. We also maintain an online repository of libraries that we've created by ourselves. Everyone is free to use them. It's called Clover DX Marketplace. Uh, and this is what it looks like. There's a web app that allows you to browse what's inside the marketplace. And some of these libraries are, uh, uh, are libraries that contain connectors for Wrangler. This is the one that simulates the online store uh we have the hubspot crm here and this is the zero accounting so you know you can always click on them to get more details but the easiest way to install them is simply from the server where the marketplace is pre-configured you pick your connector uh let's do the online store one for example you click the install button and after that you can configure what the connector is going to be uh to be called so let's call it online store uh online store webinar. This is now going to be, I think, my fourth or third instance of the same library installed on the server. Uh, I'll give it also an ID so that it's nicer. Looks like I have some problems typing today. Uh, the installation usually takes a couple seconds. It downloads the library from the website, installs and configures everything you need to. And after that, when once this is done, you'll have uh, the ability to configure 
the settings for the library. This is the one that I installed. I selected it to be installed uh, disabled. So right now it is not visible to users in Wrangler. It will become visible once I flip the switch over here and I can change the configuration. This one only has a random seed that uh, uh, that controls what kind of random data is uh, is generated. But many other libraries have additional settings, like for example, you can have authentication settings for a library, right? And, uh, tenant IDs and so on for uh, for libraries that require OAuth or similar. So let's go back here. And in here, this shows me the connectors. By default, connectors are only visible, so no one can read the data from them. But you can then easily go and change the, the settings in here to make it available to everyone. Uh, so let's do that. Let's do just the first two. Once I do this, and it'll be saved, and enable the library. This is the point at which the library becomes available to users in here. So I should have one called in here, online store webinar. And you can see that this is uh, a connector for contacts and orders. And they are different. When you look at the options that I have, the contacts one I can use because I have the ability to use add to my sources and use in a new job. This one I cannot. I can only see what's inside there. Uh, for example, I can see the columns. I cannot see the preview because I am not allowed to see the data, but I can see uh, metadata about my data and I can ask my IT team to make it available to me, at which point they go in here and change the settings to, to provide the connector access to me as well. So this is how we publish data. Uh, in data, con, uh, in data catalog. And then of course, when people are working with Wrangler, they are running jobs on CloverDX server. So you can see what they are doing. Uh, every Wrangler job, it's a new entity that, that is known to the server. Uh, so you can see, for example, this is a successful execution of a job and this one failed. Uh, you can see the error messages and, and all of that. So again, if something happens that your users cannot resolve, you'll be able to come in here and see what's going on. For example, if they are getting some connection errors that they don't understand or something similar because the API is not available, you can look at the error message details and uh, work with them to either wait for a little bit before the thing is back online or maybe fix something if, if the API changed and so on. So this way, on one hand, you have full control over uh, what's inside those libraries, uh, what do you publish and which users can work with that and how, but you can also see what they are doing with it afterwards. That's essentially the whole process, and it seems complicated when it's described like this, but it's not very far from what you normally do uh, to give users access to something in, in Clover.